So Pip's exhaust system has gotten far too loud. I suspect that all of the sound deadening in the can has just evaporated over the years. So it's time to make a new one. But this time we're going to make a repackable one. So first job, lambda sensor off and the whole tail section of the exhaust comes off by this little clamp here. So take that off and then the back of the exhaust is supported on this rubber, ma this rubber mount and then a bit of a wiggle and the whole lot comes off the car. So we'll take that into the workshop and I've got a new section of perforated tube and three rolls of sound insulation for the exhaust and I've rolled that onto there and I can measure the diameter and then I can cut some stainless steel end caps and I've done it this way so that I can just buy three rolls at repacking time and I don't have to worry about any waste material I'll just make it fit so they can be cut out on the bench here cleaned up with the grinder and then I can cut the hole out in the center on the bridge port for the pipe so they're going to go on the end of the perforated pipe like that and I need to make some hoops to go around the outside to attach the outer skin so I can roll that up on the ring roller I, I made this in a, another video if you're interested and then that's welded together and then I can use a bit of masking tape to create a strip the right width which I can cut out with the grinder and then they get put together and I'm going to TIG weld those up so just using the foot pedal here to do the pulsing and a little bit of an arc shot there And then the inner tube, the perforated tube, can be welded onto one end, flipped it over and welded on the other end as well. And I can just clean off the weld to give it a nice sort of polished finish. And then I tack the whole thing onto this piece of box section so that when I'm offering it up to the car it's not going to roll around, it just keeps it, keeps it in place. Now I salvaged the fitting off the end of the exhaust, off the old exhaust. And I could put that on and then offer up a couple of bits of tube and sort of work out how I was going to get from A to B. To cut around the, the bends, if you put a little jubilee clamp around them, then you can draw around it and that gives you a reasonably straight line. And I can get these bits all tacked together and uh, cleaned up. So the old bits gave them a run over with the, the strip and clean wheel to clean off the outside and then a, a sanding disc to, to go around the inside because we don't want to the stainless getting contaminated in the weld so a couple of tacks just to put it all together and then I could offer that up and measure for the last piece nice straight piece to finish so just get the get a measurement for that then I could cut a piece tack that on and bring all the bits together and then since I've got that bit all set up nice and level it doesn't roll I can just put a mark across there and then tap off the piece that I've tacked onto the front of the, the new muffler. Turns out the tacks were quite good, took a bit of persuading. So I'll take that off and then I can weld that whole section up with a gas purge on the bench so we don't get all the snot on the inside of the exhaust pipe. So I end up with a nice smooth in inside surface there and then I can weld that onto the new muffler. So here's that all offered up. A little bit of a test fit. Now I did have on the old exhaust one of these tight radius bends but on that back edge I had a problem with it blowing through so I've got a, a dairy bend here which is a little bit thicker and a bit more of an open radius uh, so hopefully that'll be a bit more durable and then I can use the same trick just mark both pieces of material I can take the whole thing into the workshop then and weld it up so these are fairly thick for, for a bit of exhaust, probably about two millimeter the, the dairy bends uh, as opposed to the sort of normal 1.6 or 16 gauge so it'd be what's, what's that 14 gauge is about two millimeter so get that tigged on so it turned out quite nicely and then we could do a bit of CAD that's a cardboard aided design for the uninitiated and uh, make a, a template for a bracket that's going to go between the new muffler and the existing mount. I could trace that out onto some box section, just a, an off cut from, from a previous job, and then trim that out with the grinder. Pop a little hole in it for the bolt that goes through to attach it to the chassis, 
and get that welded on. It looks quite nice. And then for the outer skin, I'm using some aluminium sheet. It's actually 2024 Alclad, which, for those of you who are familiar with the, the different grades of aluminium, is not really the ideal solution uh, or the ideal material for this, but it's what I have is about the right thickness. Um, it's a bit stiff, so it doesn't really like being formed. Um, it's also a little bit susceptible to corrosion, but it is Alclad, which means it's got a a layer of pure aluminium over the top of the 2024 on both sides um, so that sort of helps with the corrosion resistance um, but the, the positive to it being a bit stiffer is it should resist the stones and bits of road debris a little bit better um, so I rolled that up by hand um, just rolling it over a bit of stainless steel tube here um, a pair of a set of pyramid rollers would be would be nice but I haven't got a set so it was make do I could mark out for the mounting holes. It uh, would have probably been easier to do that when it was flat, but I kind of wanted to offer it up and sort of see it in place before I committed to where all the, the hole spacings were. So sort of test fit, take off, mark out, a bit of trial and error to get everything to fit, and then I could mark out my final positions for the holes. Um, I'm just using the old exhaust pipe here. It's clamped to the bench so I can work on it with it being curved rather than it being nice and flat and then I could drill for some pop rivet holes of how I'm going to fix it together and then I can transfer those holes onto the exhaust and mark out the the final length of the cover so mark that out and then just trimmed it off with some aviation shears in situ and make a nice job of the the straight edge. I could then drill through both skins at the join. And because it's so thin, I think it's only, I can't remember exactly, maybe 20 gauge uh, material, so it's very thin. So put that together with skin pins, they're just a temporary fixing, and I can get all the holes lined up. That's what it will look like. And I've set it up so that that join will be hidden up against the car so you won't see that from the outside and before final assembly I gave it a going over with the dual action sander and some scotch brite and then I can put the, the sound deadening material in so three layers of that and like I said earlier it's three complete rolls so I don't have any scrap material and then I've got some high temperature sealant and I can just put a little bit on at a time roll the skin on put some skin pins in and then go around, do a bit more, put some more skin pins in. That way I don't end up with sealant all over me and the bench and all the tools. It's uh, just a slightly cleaner way of doing it rather than trying to do it all in one go. Then at the join, just do a zigzag across all the holes and then squeeze that together and put a row of skin pins in. You can, you do end up with a bit of the, the sealant on the skin pins doing it this way, but you can just clean it off with some, uh, some solvent afterwards and then put the pop, rivet, pop rivets in to finish it off gave it a good clean up and then offered it up to the car bit of a wiggle to get it on, get the, the hole lined up at the back and then do the clamp up, put the lambda sensor back in and here's the finished product I hope you enjoyed that video, let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching, cheers!